In 2025, thousands of magicians will meet in Turin, Italy, to perform, exchange ideas and compete. This will be the 29th FISM World Championship of Magic. FISM, F-I-S-M, Fédération Internationale de Société Magique, International Federation of Magic Societies. Officially, FISM is an organization that unites magic clubs all around the world. But when magicians say FISM, they usually mean an event which takes place every three years in a different city. For example, in 2022, it took place in Quebec, in Canada, and in 2025, it will take place in Turin, Italy. This event consists of two parts. FISM World Championship of Magic, which means that hundreds of magicians come and perform their acts live on stage in front of an audience and a jury panel. And at the end of the event, jury jury gives awards to the best act, according to their opinion, in several categories. And second part is a magic convention. Thousands of people interested in magic gather in one place to hang out, to attend lectures and workshops by famous magicians, to go through dealer's room, basically a huge expo where you can buy everything related to magic, all the things that you can imagine and probably all the things that you cannot even imagine where the innovative gimmicks are presented and the new books are sold. And most importantly, it's just a place where magicians spend time together. So this is quite a unique experience. And in 2025, it will be the 29th FISM World Championship. So there were already quite a few. That's why I thought it would be really interesting to look into the history of this phenomenon and to understand where did FISM come from, uh, how did it evolve, and why is it important for the art of magic and magic community. My name is Alex Romanov, this is Art of Impossible, and I invite you on a journey into the history of the real-life magic world to explore the origins and the development of the most epic magic event, FISM World Championship of Magic, which I promise is much cooler than the world of Harry Potter. This video is produced in official collaboration with FISM. Check out FISM blog and Instagram to stay up to date and follow my channel because there will be more videos about FISM and its legendary winners coming soon. Let's begin our journey. Magic is an old art form, but the global magic community started to appear in the 19th century. This was the time when the world first started to become truly international, due to the rise of modern technologies – transportation, communication and press. It became easier to travel and to exchange information. The magic world also began to change. First magic magazines such as Magic in England, Die Zauberwelt in Germany and Mahatma in the US were founded. The first modern organization of magicians, the Society of American Magicians SAM, was established in 1902. In 1922, the International Brotherhood of Magicians IBM, was born and they started to organize first conventions in the US. But before 1930s, there was no idea of organizing an international meeting of magicians. The first international conventions took place in Europe, in Munich in 1936, Berlin 37 and Frankfurt 38 and were organized by the Magic Circle of Germany, whose president at the time was Helmut Ewald Schreiber, also known as Kalanak, who would later be notorious for entertaining the Nazi leaders. But this is a different story. The idea of a truly global magic convention appeared in 1937 because of a closed door. Here is how it happened. The French Magic Club was up to have the usual meeting in Paris, but the key to the Magic Club room was missing. Therefore, magicians had nothing to do but to go to a local pub. If they had had this key, they would have probably just shown each other card tricks, the usual way. But they went to the pub, and this was where the discussion about starting an International Magic Congress began, under the leadership of the club president passionate magician Dr. Jules Dotel. During the next decades, this idea evolved into FISM Championship of Magic, the biggest event in the magic world, the Olympics of Magic. But let's get back to 1937. Dotel and his colleagues announced the first International Congress of Magic 
to take place in 1939. In September 1939, magician Victor Farelli, in his column Notes from Paris in the Sphinx magazine, announced All the principal countries of Europe will be represented. A gala performance, a public performance, a series of private demonstrations at which the latest novelties in magic will be on view. Dealers exhibit, a grand magic banquet, official reception at the Paris Town Hall, a motor trip in and around Paris, including a visit to the famous Montmartre. So it was going to be a truly epic convention, but this announcement was followed by a note from the magazine editor. The European war makes it seem unlikely that there will be a convention. Indeed, in September 1939, Hitler invaded Poland and the Second World War began the convention had to be cancelled. During the next years, most of the magic activity in Europe was on hold. After six years, the war ended, and there was once again hope for the future. This is when the idea of Dotel finally turned into reality. In August 1946, 300 magicians from Holland, France, Great Britain, Belgium and Spain arrived to Amsterdam for the first International Congress of Magicians that took place in the Krasnopolsky Hotel. There were lectures by university professors and there was a contest with 20 competitors. The first prize went to Jean Valton from France for his card manipulation act. In September 1948, in Lausanne, Switzerland, representatives of 28 magic clubs from 13 countries formed a constitution for the FISM organization. Fun fact! At that convention, during the opening ceremony, Dotel only spoke French on stage and did not have a translator. So more than half of the room who did not speak French could not understand anything. But I believe, when it comes to magic, sometimes you do not need words. You just need your heart. It's magic. In 1950, the convention took place in Barcelona. It was won by a magician, Mystica, from Holland, with a manipulation routine during which he produced and vanished canes. Right after his performance, he was booked by top venues all around Europe. Shortly after that, he would change his stage name to Fred Caps. As Fred Caps, he would win the FISM Grand Prix two more times. Fun fact about FISM during this time, there was no playback music, so magicians were performing to a live orchestra, which for sure was a very different experience from today. Up until that time, FISM Congress took place every year, and in 1952 it was decided that it would take place every three years, which remains a tradition until today. During the following years, FISM kept growing, taking place every three years all across Europe. It became a place where star guests were sharing their knowledge and where new legends of magic were born. If you do some research and look at the history of FISM conventions and look who were the lecturers or who were the winners of first prizes or Grand Prix, then you will soon realize that it's basically a list of who is who in magic. For example, in 1964 in Barcelona there were lectures by Anverdi and Slidini, and Fred Capps won his third Grand Prix. In 1970 Arturo de Ascanio, the man who would become the father of the Spanish School of Magic, won first place in card magic. In 1973 in Paris, Derek Dingle and Ricky Jay were booked to perform their shows. Same year, Richard Ross won a Grand Prix second time in a row with his pocket watch and linking rings routine. And Juan Tamariz, who is today considered by many to be the greatest magician alive, won the first place in card magic. Originally, FISM was a European phenomenon, but the US participation in FISM grew over time, making FISM truly international. In 1982, in Lausanne, American presence became more obvious than ever before. Lance Burton, who was just 21 at the time, got a Grand Prix and later would become one of the Las Vegas headliners. 
Michael Emma got first place in Micro Magic and Daryl first place in Card Magic with his legendary ambitious card routine. As the story continued, Fism became an event with its own inside jokes, its own heroes and, of course, community. For instance, in 1985, magician Otto Wesley started his act with a pretty cool intro. His entrance was preceded by Lance Burton and Richard Ross strewing rose petals. Then there was a third petal strewer who turned out to be Tyvernon. The audience, of course, went wild. In 1973, Fism was broadcasted by French television, which resulted in 23 TV shows under the title The Wonderful World of Magic, which you can still find on YouTube. 1988 was the largest FISM by far, with over 2,000 participants coming to the Dutch city of Den Haag. There was also a reception in a municipal hall where guests were greeted by the mayor and the minister of culture. Everyone received a glass of champagne. The glasses were randomly distributed, but three of them contained real diamonds which made the party much more fun. I couldn't find the information about who got the diamonds that night. Of course, not every FISM competition was a hit. For example, in 1967 there was a commentary in Abracadabra Magic magazine describing the FISM competition of that year. Many misguided fellows doing backpalming with cards, taking off gloves, pulling silks through their fingers, passing thimbles through their knees. In most cases extremely well, but one side for something off the beaten track. Well, it is extremely hard to be original, and also if you watch magic for six days, you would for sure see a lot of similar things. Sometimes the jury made mistakes. In 1988, Leonard Green from Sweden, now a legendary card master, entered the contest. He did not get a prize because some of the judges believed that the spectators who had shuffled the cards during his routine were stooges. However, there might have been other reasons for him not getting the prize, but whatever the case, he got the well-deserved first place three years later in 1991. Similar thing happens with Tom Malika, who came third in comedy, because some of the judges believed that he had actually swallowed the cigarettes, and so decided that his act was not magic, but just a freak show. But as Max Maven wrote, Malika had the last laugh, as his appearance in the contest led to many work opportunities, far more than for many first prize winners. In 1994, FISM took place outside of Europe for the first time, in Japanese Yokohama, and it would take place for the first time in the Northern America 28 years later, in 2022 in Quebec. In 1997, in Dresden, Juliana Chen became the first woman to get the first prize in manipulation. Starting from 2003, Grand Prix was split into two awards – Close-Up Grand Prix and Stage Magic Grand Prix. That year, Jason Latimer got Grand Prix in close-up and Norbert Ferrer in stage magic. Now we are in 2024. 28 World Championships of Magic have taken place, there are 6 continental FISM divisions, 112 member societies and thousands of magicians worldwide. Winners of FISM are names that everybody in the magic community knows. They tour the world, appear on America's Got Talent, create collaborative shows and full pen and teller. History of FISM is a story of challenges, competitive spirit and tough decisions. And it is also a story of the development of the art of magic, story of innovation and creativity. But for me personally, it is in the first place a story about the unique power of magic to unite people all around the world, to bring them together no matter what their language or nationality is, and to give them this wonderful experience of belonging, of feeling that you are at home with people who share your passion, with people who share your interest, and with people who you can really spend 24 hours just doing magic tricks. Isn't it wonderful? I would like to say a huge thank you for supporting me with this video to Aldo Gormino, 
Italian magician and historian and the author of the Fissen book, to Vitus Witt, magician and historian from Germany, for his article in the Magische Welt magazine on the history of Fissen, to Max Maven, whose legacy lives on, for his articles in the Jenny magazine on the history of Fissen, and to the international Fissen president, Andrea Bayoni, for supporting this idea. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little journey. If you did, then subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button, because in the next video I will talk to the international FISM president, Andrea Bayoni, about FISM championship, about its past, present and future. My name is Alex Romanov, this is Art of Impossible, I will see you next time.